Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Misty and of course the name, the channel's name is Speculative Magpie and we're here to do some ebook reviews today and um, because they're ebook reviews I have them pulled up on my computer so yes you are going to be seeing the little purple um, squares in my glasses that can't be helped. I'm sorry about that. Um, Hopefully it's not too annoying. I wish there was a way I could fix it, but anti-glare is what it is. So this is a entry to um, Frostbite 2022s. He's recently changed his name <laughs> and kind of redirected his um, his channel. So. I will get that new name down in the comments so you know who I'm talking about, but this is for his Halloween readathon. And then I have two more stories that I read and I should be caught up and I can start um, next video talking about more for um, Paul's readathon and then I'll have some books for... Um, Books of Blood, um, A to Z Halloween readathon. Okay, so that is a very convoluted um, intro. So let's get on with the books. So I guess we should do Paul's first. That way, if that's just what you're here for, that's what you can hear. So for Paul's for September, his September was S, Coming of Age. Now for that, I read the horror book Dirty Heads by Aaron Dries. It's free on Kindle, so if you want to read it, you can read it there. It's a short book. So let's read the synopsis and then we'll come back and talk about it, okay? So here we go. Dirty Heads by Aaron Dries. The story of a boy who dreamed of becoming a man, but dreamed up a monster instead. You're on the run, marked. Don't think about the kid you used to be when you were, when you're homeless and dumpster diving in the rain. Just eat whatever you find to keep your engine full because the shadow with too many teeth wants you tired. You're easier to catch when you're tired. It has hunted you since the summer of 1994 back when we confessed who we were through mixed tapes when every movie at the video store had dirty heads. You were 13 and thought you knew who you were. Only the shadow with too many teeth knew you better, and it still does, and it won't stop. Not until you come home. Back to where it all began. Part cosmic horror, part coming-of-age monster story. Dirty Heads is a terrifying read from the author of House of Size, The Fallen Boys, and A Place for Sinners. So, this was a very interesting book. It takes place um, like not too long, like a couple days before Y2K, for those of us that remember that. <laughs> and basically, um, this boy, uh, when he was 13, liked to go to the video store. And he was an artist. He liked to draw and he liked to draw scary things. And one of the things he liked to do at the video store, because he couldn't rent movies, was he liked to draw the covers. Because, let's face it, horror stories back then had some awesome artwork on their VHS covers. Seriously, 80s and 90s horror had excellent artwork. And um, so he found a movie that he liked the cover of and using his artistic license drew a monster. But when he went home uh, and kind of finished this monster, somehow through the fabric of time, this monster kind of 
came to life in the basement of his house. And in a roundabout way, spoilers kind of, but I think you can guess it, his, the monster like destroyed his family. There was some other emotional stuff going on that kind of led to turmoil in his family and he took off. And so he's on the run trying to stay away from this monster, but this monster always follows him. And, but eventually it's Y2K and he goes home to kind of confront this monster. And basically the story is kind of like, it's told mostly in flashbacks with kind of a little bit of what he's going through now. And it is really good. Now, I have heard this referred to as extreme horror. Um, I didn't find it all that extreme, to be honest. It had some really creepy parts, some, but it wasn't that horrifying to me. Um, it was like metaphorical because the main character, he is gay and it was a small town in the 90s even in Australia that was probably not looked too well upon and so there's that whole metaphor of his monster following him destroying his family and all that other stuff that a lot of young gay men had to deal with back then and I just really enjoyed this book, thought it was amazing. Uh, the writing was spectacular. There were some really scary parts, but I don't know if I would put this in the category of, oops, I've lost it. Come back here so I can talk about other books. So, but I don't know if I would put it in the category of extreme. It was just creepy with some frightening and some sad parts. And the ending was a bit um, sad and ambiguous, which I kind of liked. So I gave it on Goodreads four out of five stars. It's really hard to rate books, I guess. I enjoyed it, I thought it was fantastic, and I would highly recommend you reading it. So that was Dirty Heads by Erin Dries, a really good read, and my first book for the Halloween readathon, third year running. So now let's talk about the next book I read. This book, I'm willing to admit that it got some, I read it strictly because of the title. And the title of this book is Man Fuck This House by Brian Asman. And the, I know people said it was a great book, but you know, people say a lot of books are great that I don't particularly like. So I just picked it up strictly based on title alone. And it was a really fun, really weird book. So let's read the synopsis and we'll come back and talk about it a bit. All right, Sabrina ha Haskins and her family have just moved into their dream home. A gorgeous craftsman in the rapidly growing southwestern city of Jackson Hill. I just lost my place. <laughs> Sabrina's a bored and disillusioned homemaker, how's a reverse mortgage salesman with a penchant for ill-timed sports analogies. Their two children, Damien and Michaela, are bright and precocious. At first glance, the house is perfect, but things aren't what they seem. Sabrina's hearing odd noises, seeing strange visions, their neighbors are odd or absent, and Sabrina, already fraught relationship with her son, is about to be tested in a ways no parent could ever imagine. Because while the Hastings family might be the newest owners of 4596 James Circle. They are far from its only residence. I gave this book, again, a four stars. I liked it just a little bit better than it was okay. 
I, I thought it was really good. I thought this book was extremely creative and really fucking creepy. There were some scenes in here that were just like, like, not like horrifying or anything. Again, this book, people have kind of said was extreme horror, but I'm not really seeing it. It was just creepy and scary, and there were a couple gross parts, but they really weren't that bad. Um, this book was more unsettling than anything, and I'm going to be honest, I'm... The one thing about horror, one of the tropes that I'm tired about is the shrew wife. Um, that could be because I'm a wife, but I'm really tired about the disillusioned wife who's just tired of her life. She doesn't particularly like her kids and she's just, you know, thinking about all the past choices that she could have made and the husband is clueless. The daughter's wonderful, and the son is like an evil monster. The son's not an evil monster. Um, the wife just never bonded with him, so she figured, hey, let's name him Damien. And he's extra smart, extra precocious, and he uses his mother's um, dislike of him to his advantage. Um, and... While I don't particularly care for a lot of the relationships in this book, overall, as a whole, I I thought this was a good book. I enjoyed the, um, the premise of this book. Bit of spoilers. This is like the, um, kind of like the science fiction trope of the animated house that goes wrong, but only toss in horror in there. And it's just, it's so creative. It's such a good book. I There's some downfalls, like I said, but as a whole, this, this was a really interesting, fun book to read. And if you like, I think the take on the smart house is, is just really good. It's just really brilliant. And Brian Asman is definitely incredibly creative for coming up with this story. I think it was just fantastic. Now, let's talk about the most horrifying thing I read in the past two weeks. It's a short story. You've probably seen it going around uh, horror book talk for a while. But it's The Hay Bell by Priscilla Bettis. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. And let's read the premise. And then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay? Okay. Professor Claire Davenport yearns to be a mother. After suffering four miscarriages, the university microbiologist tries and fails to qualify as an adoptive mother. Then Claire's husband leaves. Alone and emotionally wounded, Claire takes a summer sabbatical from her microbiology classes and escapes to rural Virginia to heal. There she meets local farmers with strange agricultural practices. Claire moves into, his, in, into the historic manor house she rented for the summer and an abandoned child greets her. Is the child real, an answer to her prayers, or is he a figment of her tormented emotions? Perhaps the tight-knit locals are playing a trick on the science lady from the city. Whatever the boy's origin, Claire is determined to find the truth, but the truth may be bloody. Out of all the things that I have read in a long time, this is probably the most horrifying and some of the the scenes in this short story which is not very long i i think it was only about um 40 pages maybe 56 i don't remember it wasn't very much it took me about two hours to read because i kept having to stop and um think about what i was reading um this book this story hit me pretty hard. Um, 
I think probably because it deals with the emotions that a woman is going through after she's had some miscarriages, fertility issues, um, then her husband leaves and she still has his voice inside her head. That's one of the things in this book that was almost kind of like a gut punch in here was the 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 deprivating voice in her head that she couldn't help but reply to was the voice of her husband or her soon to be ex-husband or whatever he was. And the scenes with her and the hay bale as like, there's no way to tiptoe around that metaphor. It was disturbing, disgusting, and it was fantastic. The imagery in this, in this story was, I'm not going to lie. It still sticks with me. <laughs> um, this would be one of those stories that I think should be taught alongside the lottery. Um, it's definitely has that feel, that Southern Gothic, small town, just secular weirdness going on. And it was just disturbing. And I loved it. It was fantastic. Um, Trigger warnings for women, if you've experienced that, it will probably resonate a little more with you than um, some other readers, but it was, it was just such a good short story. I, I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want to give anything away about it because I think it's just so visceral. <laughs> that it just needs to experience be experienced blindly and i definitely definitely think this is one of those like horror stories that should become a classic and should be taught in literature class as a way to write modern gothic horror because it's just that good um so yeah those are the three horror books i read um I have a surprise book haul <laughs> that's kind of funny to do next, and um, I will be doing some uh, smut books later because I found an interesting series that I'm enjoying, so I haven't forgot about horror, guys, so <laughs> I'm still reading it, I promise, so yeah, that is my three ebooks, and I'm trying to keep this under 20, so at 18 minutes, I'm going to stop now. So thank you for coming back so we can talk about books and things. And please, if there's still time, if you want to do any of these, um, these Halloween challenges, jump on them. They're very low-key. Paul basically is six books any way you want to do it you have until november 15th for his books of blood he's letting you read short stories or you don't have to do all the prompts he just wants you to read together with him as a theme i think it's wonderful and so thank you for coming back so we can talk about books and things and i will see you next time bye y'all